All right, guys, have to go back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant Rostermania. Plenty of updates today, and especially NRG FNS giving his thoughts on Prod and Tanatra's team going into the Ascension qualifiers coming up very soon indeed. Reckoning that Shanks as the IGL is not the way to go for that team to be successful. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Quick update here. Valorant apparently is coming to console at some point in the future. New job posting. I think there was a job posting back in February and another one very recently basically saying yes Valorant will be on console at some point wonder what this means for how the esport could go just because we know that it's coming to mobile soon as well and um you know other esports like Call of Duty for example there's Call of Duty competitive but there's also COD mobile competitive like they have a whole new circuit for the mobile game so um you know, I'm just wondering like whether that's even a possibility that uh, you know Valorant mobile esports actually becomes a thing I'm not sure it's going to be particularly entertaining to watch but um still i guess stay tuned because right we'll see what they think is best and maybe nintendo ds valorant could be pretty different as well this is honestly a really well done graphic i mean look at the way that the, the shadows work here from the sentinels kind of graphic designer impressively done but unfortunately as it stands not legitimate man it's been a long time since i've been on the nintendo ds but uh, yeah probably valorant on it wouldn't exactly be the greatest uh, time but i suppose it remains to be seen quick comment on some tournaments going on around the world this is the g loot showdown happening relatively soon and these are the teams involved some big name teams in this good to see that finally some tournaments are starting to happen with the teams that have been formed of course like, you know we've got some teams here that are actually in the vct tier one we've got you know giants we've got navi we've got vitality unfortunately no heretics in this one right i guess they just played that tourney over there in india recently but still we get to see some teams at it over the coming days here to just check how things are going because many are trying to come up with their power rankings right now how they're going to rank the teams in north america how they're going to rank them in europe and it's very difficult to do at this stage of the season. This is another tourney that's going on in South Korea then with Gen G, DRX, Zeta Division and Co. So yeah, just an invite only tournament here with Talon Esports of course as well rounding out the lineup for this tournament. So yeah, definitely going to have a look at that as time progresses. Let's talk 100 Thieves. James joining their kind of assistant coach role for the team. We know that Sean Gares took a step away. We saw the other day the effectiveness of Sean Gares' timeouts across his history and uh, James is going to join as the assistant coach. Interesting because this guy was formerly working with Cloud9, I'm pretty sure. And then there were recently some rumors that he was actually going to be potentially joining. I think it was NRG. Was it NRG that he was on like the list of, I thought, when Riot released their spreadsheet the other day that we thought he was going to potentially join there as an assistant coach? Maybe it was 100 Thieves all along and I'm getting confused. But um, yeah, still. So he's going to be joining as the assistant coach. Mike's HD is becoming the head coach for the team. James is now becoming the assistant coach. And I think this makes a fair bit of sense. They're going to need some more voices in the room if they want 100T to be the best team in the business because, I mean, look, that team has so much potential on paper. The um, the players are fantastic. What they delivered last season, given the circumstances with, you know, Will, of course, stepping in as well, was um, really impressive. And now they've upgraded Will to Cryo and kept the rest of their team together. Like, um, I think there's a really bright future for this 100 Thieves lineup. But um, still, they're going to need the back-end staff because I think the Sean Gares was a key piece of their success last season. Won't have him any longer gone to content. So I think a good replacement, I suppose, to what their coaching staff is planning to be. Let's talk some of the rosters that are being formed. Them, of course, we already well know what the pro rosters are going to be. Sentinels, Dev having a good time here on Pearl, and even some have said, you know what, just bring it split back ASAP. And I do wonder what the lineup of maps is going to look like in the new year. But also, we've got Dapper here, me back on his Cipher BS. So, um, you know, Dapper, we think it's going to go to G2 with Shazam, Whippy, Penny, and potentially Oxy as well that we saw yesterday. And uh, maybe he's going to be back on Cipher. Who knows? Weird one, really, because with Chamber being still so dominant as he is, tough to see any other. Sentinel being viable. We still haven't really heard any rumors about any changes to, you know, Chamber. They tried, of course, to change him, but the reality is they didn't really change what makes him so strong. So for now, he's still the dominant force. I think at Game Changers World Championship, Chamber was still picked on about 75, 80% of maps, which is probably about right for the current state of the meta, to be honest. The other, you know, the other top agents have 50% pick rate and Chambers have at 75, 80%. So, you know, kind of clear how that one is potentially going to go in the future if Riot want to balance things a little bit better and they're trying to make Cypher better to be more viable maybe when they decide to nerf Chamber we shall see who does that help who does that hurt who knows but one team that will be competing with G2 in the Ascension qualifiers coming up as I said yesterday potentially December the 5th but um we still don't actually know 100% is this team with Prod and Sinatra basically a streamer team and look as FNS is going to go on to say I'm sure there's going to be some entertainment coming out from this camp I'm sure it'll be pretty well interesting to hear their communications but uh, will
will they be any good? This is the thing Sinatra said the other day, this is not going to be easy. He said to Shanks, look, we are playing good teams in tier two. Like, um, they've got to qualify for tier two, the circuit, first of all. They've got to qualify for the challenger circuit, and that's not going to be so easy. Probably only, you know, a dozen teams will qualify for it through a couple of different qualifiers over a couple of weekends, and they'll be playing up against the phases, the guards, you know, all these top teams that fail to make it into franchising and all the top players, you know, they'll all be down there. So these guys have to compete against, well, a pretty high level to actually even qualify, and how might they get on? Sinatra said they're really going to have to put in the time and put in the practice if they want to qualify here and make it through with this roster. Shanks reckon it's going to be a walk in the park, but FNS says that with Shanks as IGL, of course, FNS knows a fair bit about being an IGL for Optic in the recent couple of years, then, um, yeah, he's not a big fan of this potential roster. Thoughts on Prize Ascension team? I have no idea what the lineup is, so... Is a content creator lineup? Yeah, I mean, it's probably funny as hell being on that team, though. <clears throat> Lots on Shanks' IGL? Come on, brother. <laughs> Please elaborate. Come on, if you get it, you get it, man. Are you watching the World Cup? I watched a couple games, yeah. Between you and me, so said Sinatra no is the lie. toughest to play against because he has good moves. FNS. <laughs> he did not say that, bro. <laughs> Said he had good moves. <laughs> oh, movement. Good movement. Oh, he said it because he said good movement. Yeah, okay, I can believe that. I can believe that. Like that part. The hog over there said prime. Wait, where did he say that? On stream or something? He said that your move is really good and you don't Space give free safe. kills every time you fight his heart. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, when I actually try my hardest and, like, I'm, like, jiggling, it's, like, it's just too much value, bro. Because, like, the chance I can get a kill on the jiggle, because I'm good at it, and, like, the, the moment, like, they don't know when I'm gonna peek, and I'm, I can peek whenever, and it just stalls them, and then my other teammates can just, like, them. So it's just, like, too much value. So. And also there, thought some interesting comments from uh, from Sinatra himself on what FNS said the other day, because we saw that clip from FNS where he said, you know what, Sinatra, along with a couple of other players, is one of the hardest players to kill in the entire game, because, like, his movement is so good, so polished, and it's just interesting to see how, like, Sinatra's career's gone, really, because I know, like, every time we talk about Sinatra, there's some spicy comments in the comment section below, one way or the other. But, um, you know, still, obviously, I think people were expecting Sinatra to get onto a different team, or, you know, to play with a different roster, and yeah, FNS does not seem particularly confident this team is going to deliver the goods. They've got some solid streamer players, plus Sinatra. ML's pretty good as well, but they're going to need a good fifth, right? And FNS is not a big fan, clearly, of Shanks' IGL abilities and uh, reckons that might be a key factor holding them back going forwards. So Shanks is, you know, a decent player, of course, but, um, you know, not good enough for FaZe's starting team. So doesn't necessarily bode too well for the success of this team. They have tried to get marved, maybe to just, like, please help us out for this one tournament and then maybe once they qualify they could make a change and Marv could go back to chilling for the rest of the season but um, yeah I don't know who they're going to get as their fifth but I think that's probably the key factor going forwards. Quick question on Harbour what would you guys do to fix Harbour in the current state of the game? Boaster reckons ideas to fix him. This is the thing as a new controller we've seen other agents the Neons the Fades you know Neon less so but certainly Fade and Chamber for sure have become very prevalent in the meta. I think many were expecting that Harbour would at least be viable in the current state of competitive and we saw that Paper X tried it at that India Invitational, but um, he's not really viable right now. So what could they change to make him more viable? Thought an interesting idea here from Boaster. If enemies run through the wall, they should get splashed in their eyes. It's like some sort of like screen watery thing, or they just drown immediately. So I kind of doubt they would do the latter. But um, the idea that coming through the wall should like blind you effectively, like um, I think that's probably a reasonable idea actually. And then how about the barrier orb that you put up? Like, um, you know, maybe you can shoot through it without the bullets getting blocked. So 
yeah, he reckons that Harbour's just dog right now, and that I think this actually makes sense as a reasonable idea. Now, I thought this is maybe a better idea from Vanity, just as one potential solution, and um, I think this is a pretty obvious one, to be honest, because shooting his smoke is so easy. Yes, it takes quite a lot of bullets, but, like, um, you can shoot it relatively quickly, and it's not really a big deal. And the issue is it disappears immediately. I don't really mind the idea that there's, um, you know, it's got a barrier. The, the smoke orb has a barrier to it, a barrier effect that takes 15 or so Vandal bullets to kill, but um, once you do kill it, the smoke just disappears immediately. And if that was different, like, um, and once you destroyed the smoke barrier effectively, the smoke still remains, like, I think that would be a, a good factor to try and improve Harbour a little bit. So I do wonder whether a small tweak like that could make a pretty big difference, and um, yeah, Boaster and Vanity seem to be on board with something along those lines. And also, just to mention this, I thought an interesting kind of battle here between who would win at their peak, obviously last season's FBX team, or the Sentinels roster, because um, Wilmider is doing this all-time VCT team tournament with a bracket in play, which, um, as you can see here, so this is a Champions 22 Loud versus Masters 2 Fnatic, of course. Loud won that one, and then this is the second round matchup, and then we'll see at the end of this who comes out on top as the best ever Valorant team we have seen at certain events in Valorant history. But very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.